on what was there. <laughs> well, it's down the road where the pick and save used to be. You know where pantry pride was? My family refuses to come into this century. We live our lives based on landmarks that are no longer in existence in reality, but in our mind they are present. The old gray mare, she ain't what she used to be. Used to be. She used to could whistle, but now she can't. I used to could, but now not anymore. Mama used to say that. Used to be. How many of you like the way it was? Put your hands up. Put your hands up higher. Put your hands down. How many of you are the way it was? <laughs> yeah, put your hands down. I can see you. Stuck in the past, but delightfully so. I was stuck in between my mom's dad and my dad's dad. Both grandparents lived on both sides of me. I grew up with the past. Brought into my present. Every day after school, I would go to one house and then the next. And I was a strange child, Jim. <laughs> I actually wanted to know stories of how you walked backward to school and only earned a nickel for a week's work. I asked about these experiences of life in the old days. My grandfather showed me the little ration card he was given out that allowed him to get food at certain times during our past in America. I was interested in the lessons that could be learned about what life was like then and what it's like now. How many of you own a cell phone? Turn it off. <laughs> if I hear a cell phone, I will answer it. And embarrass the hell out of you. <laughs> Now have an economy based on credit. 
percent of the people who communicate with me do so by text. Patients and clients who want to see me in therapy do so by text. I get asked regularly through text, is it okay if we have our session like this? <laughs> These are people under 40 who really think it's okay to have their session like this while they're driving and reading coffee. <laughs> <laughs> There's nothing wrong with high-tech wonderfulness, but we have forgotten how to communicate. We actually have verbiage today that we use to describe what used to be commonplace. We call it FaceTime. <laughs> because we have to differentiate today what's FaceTime and what's virtual FaceTime. We're fragmented, and it's interesting to me how we are so much more connected through technology, but we understand each other so little. <laughs> Remarkable, we can talk to people in the rainforest, but we don't understand simple human needs. We think we're staying in touch by a text here or there, but sometimes that substitutes for just sitting down and looking at somebody in the eye and listening to what they have to say. I love technology, but it will not be a substitute for a one-on-one -on -one conversation, a face-to-face -face conversation, and the ability to connect with the eyes and with the mouth. So, live below your means, learn how to communicate. How many of you are married? Or have a significant smother, a other in your life? <laughs> Raise your hands. All right, look around, guys, at the hands that are up. These people know how to communicate. That was sarcasm. <laughs> Half of the people who see me in private practice are couples of some sort and they're having a communication problem. It's almost always about assuming you think you know what the other person's going to say. Communication. So important. So hard to do. Number three. See how fast we're going? The pain's almost over. <laughs> learn to serve and learn to sacrifice. Let me read you something. One night at 11.30 p.m., an older African-American woman was standing on the side of an Alabama highway trying to endure a lashing rainstorm. Her car had broken down and she decided she needed a ride. Soaking wet, she flagged down the next car. A young white man stopped to help her. Generally, this was unheard of in the conflict-filled 1960s. The man took her to safety, helped her get assistance, and put her in a cab. She seemed to be in a very big hurry, but wrote down his address and thanked him. Eight days went by, and a knock came at the man's door. To his surprise, a giant console color TV was delivered to his home. A note was attached, and it read, Thank you so much for assisting me on the highway the other night. The rain drenched not only my clothes, but also my spirit. Then you came along. Because of you, I was able to make it to my dying husband's bedside just before he passed away. God bless you for helping others and me and unselfishly serving. Sincerely, Mrs. Nat King Cole. Learning how to serve. Learning how to sacrifice. Used to be something that all of us did with ease, but today we live in an environment with it's a little more difficult to trust. In the days when an ice cream sundae cost much less, a 10 year old boy entered a hotel coffee shop and sat at a table. A waitress put a glass of water in front of him. They don't do that today. You have to ask for water. How much is an ice cream sundae? He asked. Fifty cents, said the waitress. The little boy put his hand in his pocket and studied the coins that came out. Well, how much is a plain dish of ice cream? He asked. By now, people were waiting. She was impatient, and she said brusquely, Thirty-five cents. The little boy counted his coins, fidgeted for a moment, and said, I'll have the plain ice cream. The waitress brought the ice cream, put the bill on the table, and walked away. The boy finished his ice cream, paid the cashier, and left. When the waitress came back, she began to cry as she wiped down the table because there placed neatly beside the empty dish were two nickels and five pennies. You see, he could 
Sunday because he had to have enough to leave Earth here. Always remember those who serve you. Many years ago, when I worked as a volunteer at the hospital, I got to know a little girl named Liz who was suffering from a rare and serious disease. Her only chance of recovery was to be receiving of a blood transfusion from her five-year-old brother, who had somehow miraculously survived the same disease and had the antibodies she needed to live. The doctor explained the situation to her brother and asked the little boy if he would be willing to give his blood to his sister. The boy hesitated, but only for a moment, took a deep breath and said, yes, I'll do it if it will save her. As the transfusion progressed, he lay in bed next to his sister and smiled, as we all did, seeing the color return to her cheek. Then his face grew pale, and his smile faded. He looked up at the doctor, and he asked with a trembling voice, Will I start to die right away? Being young, the little boy had misunderstood the physician. He thought he was going to have to give his sister all of his blood that she might live. Giving when it counts, learning to sacrifice, selflessness, timeless used to be that are more rare today. Learning to plan. How many of you are planners in the room? How many of you plan to be out of church today on time? <laughs> Raise your hands if you floss every day. 
in mason jars by grandma. That changed so fast that we eat a lot of processed pre-made foods today. It's difficult to eat fresh. It's difficult to consider one's diet, but it's part of a plan. Sleep. How many of you sleep six hours a night or more? Jim, look at these people. How many of you drink? Water, that is. Enough fluids each day to keep yourself sustained. America has been shown to be sleep deprived and dehydrated on a regular basis. We make decisions because we don't get enough sleep and we don't get enough fluids and our decisions are affected by our deprivation. How many of you have secrets? <laughs> <laughs> secrets that are embarrassing and painful. Yeah. I'm taking care of a 41-year-old young man right now who will probably be dead by July because he was embarrassed about his bowel problem. And he kept it a secret for a year. A year! He did whatever it took to hide this embarrassment. This embarrassment happened to be stage four colon cancer. Interesting how sometimes our secrets and our embarrassments can lead to outcomes that we don't really want. Learn how to take care of yourself from the simple biological needs all the way up to the spiritual and the emotional. And our final this morning is learn to see opportunity in the obstacle. In ancient times, a king had a boulder placed on the roadway. He hid himself and watched to see who would move the big rock. Some of his wealthiest and most powerful merchants came by and simply walked around it. Many loudly blamed the king and complained, We pay taxes to keep these roads clear, Margie. <laughs> How come the king hasn't done anything about this? And then along came a peasant. It's always a peasant. <laughs> or a child. These metaphors conjure up opportunities to learn. The peasant came along and he was carrying a big load of vegetables for the farmer's market. Upon approaching the boulder, he got out and tried to move it. After much pushing and straining, he finally succeeded. After the peasant picked up the load of vegetables, he noticed a small purse lying in the road where the boulder had been. He opened the purse. The purse contained gold coins and a note from the king implicating that the gold was for the person who removed the boulder from the highway. The peasant that day learned what many of us today fail to understand. Every obstacle presents an opportunity our condition. How many of you have obstacles in your life? Maybe you are the obstacle. <laughs> Maybe that's part of your challenge is, is, is trying to figure out how best to deal with one's self. Sometimes it's not someone else or something else. It's us that get in the way of our own good health and well-being. My challenge in this new 2012 it will only last until December 21st, due to the Mayan calendar. <laughs> is that we find ways to import, to recruit old values in this new high-tech world. There is no way, nor do I have an interest in ditching the high-tech. It has its useful purpose. But we have to get back to some basic truths that we brought to light today. You can start today simply by keeping your cell phones off while you're driving. Refuse to talk on the phone while you're driving. Victor, I never did that for years. I waited till I got to the next location and I had a message and I called him back and Jim, I didn't even want to talk to him anyway. <laughs> Simple things we can learn to do. Close your eyes. 